guys, and happy Pride Month. Man, 2020 sure has been shit, hasn't it? But at least Pride Month has given me a little bit of a smile. That and gaming. So I thought it would be even better if we focused on both of these topics. Originally I thought about doing a top 10 on these, but I think it's better to talk about the games that the LGBT community can look back on with... Pride. Puns aside, from the last few years, developers have slowly but surely been given the creative freedom to make characters from all walks of life. So myself and Starfall will be giving off our favorite examples of representation from video games. Also, uh, hi. Yep, introducing Renegade Master from the channel Renegade Master. I thought it'd be best to bring someone along for this topic. The more the merrier. Also, this way, if there are any bad picks, I could toss the blame on him. And since we're on topic of bad picks, if any of Starfall's picks fall short of greatness, feel free to bring out a standout game with LGBTQ representation in the comment section below. Yep, yeah, we'd both like to hear more about what this amazing community can tell us. No, then, I know that you're the guest here, Ren, but do you mind if I bring up the first game? Eh, ladies first. Now, it is only fair that if we are talking about LGBT games, that we bring up the first ever LGBT game. Caper in the Castro. And while we did say we were mostly talking about favorites, I've never even heard of this game until wanting to do this video. But I am happy that I looked it up, because it turns out games are supporting LGBT rights all the way back in 1989. Caper in the Castro is a point-and-click murder mystery puzzle game where you play as a lesbian detective named Triker McDyke, who is searching for their trans friend. Granted, the game doesn't look amazing with its low graphics and only black and white colors, but to be fair, very few games looked amazing back then. It was also one of the earliest indie games ever made, and like I said, was the first ever game to have a lesbian protagonist. To quote the title screen, it's not just a game, it's a game. The developer worked so hard on this on side of their full-time job and it shows, and it was only right to bring it up here today. From wacky murder mysteries to a more grounded setting and furries, we have Night in the Woods, a game that juxtaposes its cartoon characters with a relatable setting. Many of the characters in NITW feel like people who you might have met in your day-to-day -day life, especially if you were living in a more religious area. Though the highlight for many, including myself, is the couple Greg and Angus. Greg is a fun-loving guy that lives life to the fullest, and Angus is a lot more quiet and reserved. So both are on the opposite ends of the spectrum, but I guess opposites attract because in certain parts of the game we get to see them as a couple and they're pretty cute together. Also the main character, May, is a good instance of representation as well, as she's hinted at either being bi or pan. And we do see some moments of her attempting romance in the many hijinks taking place throughout Possum Springs. Night in the Woods aimed to be a game that most young adults could relate to, and having some well-written LGBT folk went a long way in realizing that. Hey Ren? Yeah? Do visual novels count as video games? Uh, I mean, you usually make choices to proceed with the story, so yeah, most visual novels should count. Works for me. I would like to talk about my favorite visual novel, The Arcana. This story is by far one of the best I've had the pleasure to enjoy. It's also one that has almost no straight characters. And even better, you can pick your pronouns at the menu. The Arcana is a story where you take the role of a young magician in the fictional country of Vesuvia, where three years ago, from when the story takes place, an epidemic swept through the lands. Jeez, doesn't that sound familiar? Also during that time, the Count of Vesuvia, Lucio, had been murdered, and his wife, the Countess, comes to you in order to track down his killer who has been rumored to have returned to the land. What I love the most about this game are the love interests. And for the purposes of this video, none of them are canonically straight. There are six people you can choose from, and all of them are so well written and interesting. My personal favorite being the Countess, Nadia. The developers are still working hard on the stories and the artwork for this game. If you haven't heard of this before, I highly recommend giving this story a read. So in terms of narratives about overcoming adversities, a person climbing up a mountain is about as standard as you can get. Though the destination would be nothing if the journey wasn't as memorable. Celeste turned a simple climb up an unstable mountain into an experience that I won't forget anytime soon with its tackling of mental health. And throughout all of your climbing, dashing, and endless deaths, you not only conquer Mount Celeste, but also travel to the core of the mountain and even travel through space. And at the end of chapter 9, you discover that Madeline is actually trans, 
and going through the main game again, it all adds up pretty well. Mental health is an element that is experienced from many people with gender dysphoria, and Madeline's struggle to climb up Mount Celeste are put into greater context with this bit of info at the end. It's also pretty cool that Matt Makes Games not only made a great character, but also made her relatable to a large audience with her climb up Mount Celeste. Huh. It's come to my attention that we've put a lot of focus on indie games here. I mean, most publishers in the AAA space are cowards, so it's not too surprising. I mean, how will 18-year-old Timmy survive with gay people existing in his M-rated video games? Well, that is true. There are some AAA studios out there with the bull testicles to not just dip in their toes, but cannonball in. Another reason why I love Borderlands. I have stated time and time again on this channel that I think these are the best FPS games out there. Gearbox and 2K went out of their way to make such great and memorable characters, and a good chunk of them just so happen to be part of the LGBT community. In fact, Borderlands 3 has a DLC adventure all around the gay wedding of one of their main NPCs, Sir Alistair Hammerlock. And there are several other characters with great representation. My personal favorite being Tiny Tina, who happens to be lesbian and also one of the deadliest and most explosive characters. It just makes me so happy that one of the best game series out there also isn't afraid to show its pride too. Continuing this trend of showing the handful of times the AAA side of the gaming industry was wanting to expand into different types of characters, we have Bioware. Both Dragon Age and Mass Effect made strides with including same-sex relationships within their newer games. While I'm not too familiar with the former, the latter is an interesting sight to see, with LGBT representation finding its way into a sci-fi action series like Mass Effect. With Mass Effect being a sci-fi action game, it has the option to romance the side characters that you recruit in each game. Mass Effect 1 had a race of aliens called the Asari, a species with characteristics of both men and women, but exclusively referred to with female pronouns. Basically like a Steven Universe. So it was possible to romance the character Liara even if you were playing as a female Shepard. In Mass Effect 2, there was dialogue for same-sex relationships going by the unused audio in the game, but public backlash scared the higher-ups at the time so the only way to experience this is with a restoration mod in the PC version. Mass Effect 3 showed how much freedom Bioware had gotten by finally allowing Shepard to romance a same-sex partner, and just in time for the end of all organic life in the universe. And keep in mind, this was three years before gay marriage was made legal to an American audience, long before companies swapped their logos for rainbow-colored ones to look trendy on social media. So Bioware should be given a lot of praise for going against the grain at the time. And, uh, also for giving every guy in the world the fantasy of romancing best boy Garrus over here. Did... Did any AAA developers do anything else? I mean, I know Nintendo does something every now and then with Vivian being trans and Isabel being pan, but did anyone else do anything? I mean, there's Naughty Dog, whose lead director likes to write about gay people as much as he likes to overwork his staff. Anyway, let's get back to talking about indie games! Who here likes the Game Grumps? Well, guess what? They made what many people consider to be the most gay game of the 2010s, Dream Daddy, the dad dating simulator. Yep, this is a thing. And the trend of dating simulators being the weirdest and most random of any game genre, we have one where you play as a single dad trying to get it on with all these single dads of the neighborhood. And the strangest thing about it? It's spectacular. When I first saw the image for this, I thought this was going to be a rehash of Hatful Boyfriend. But Danny and Aaron put a lot of work into this game. It looks beautiful, the music is great, it's gay themes taken very seriously, and most importantly, it's fun. You can even design what you as a dad would look like. In fact, it was so good that it's available on Steam, PS4, and it even has a Switch port. Just goes to show you can never truly judge a book by its cover. To finish off my end, of the handful of games that I brought to the table, most of them were grounded and relatable. Uh, minus the going into space and having sex with aliens. Though, I think what encapsulates the majority of being in the LGBT community is how you feel, and Luca, Born of a Dream, is an abstract game that'll make you feel some things. This is a Souls-like with a messy art style that does well in conveying how most queer folk might be feeling in a specific environment. For a lot of people in the LGBT community, there is a chance that you've lived in a religious household or have interacted with religious people. The symbolism and imagery of Luca will look very familiar, and it's all quite messy. 
This is a game about interpretation, and what you'll take away from this game will vary from how you interpret parts of the game, like, say, the use of the corruption meter, to how the design of the main character has clipped wings, implying a fall from grace, or the abstract dialogue telling a story about someone trying to find their true identity in a strict religious environment demanding conformity. The world can be a scary place, but if you can find some good people along the way in this journey that we call life, you might find the comfort that we're all looking for. Wow, Ren, that was very deep and thought-provoking. I'm almost embarrassed to bring up the last game I wanted to talk about. Ah, oh, come on, it can't be that out of left field. Let's hear what it is. Well... <laughs> okay, then? I swear I can explain. This is Monster Prom, an indie multiplayer dating sim taking place in a high school filled with all different kinds of monsters. And the reason I wanted to talk about it last was... Mm, what's the best way to describe this game? Unapologetically unorthodox. The scenarios that get described are as bizarre as they come, from scamming people online to actual murder. But what makes it even better, and why I'm talking about it here now, are the characters. I love every single one of them, including the playable ones. And again, you can choose your name and pronouns for each one. You can have the masculine characters have female pronouns if you want. That's just fantastic. And above all, the love interests are hilarious in each of their own ways. To quote Bowser from that one meme, There's no such thing as straight people, Mario! The developers did very well to make great characters who just don't give a shit about gender. One of my favorite lines in the game is, We're sisters, not sisters. <laughs> oh, it's so great. It's not at all deep, but it is one of the most enjoyable and fun games I've ever played. Well, this was a gay old time. Thanks for having me on, Starfall, especially since my picks had definitely overshadowed yours. Wow, that pun sure was an ace in the hole. And for the record, I had the fun picks, so I see this as a win for me. Oh, and uh, by the way, I have my own channel, which will be linked on screen. Feel free to visit, I talk about games and stuff. Wow. Subtle transition. But yeah, go check out his channel, and next time we do something like this, I'll invade your channel. Looking forward to it. Hopefully it'll be more than a flash in the pan. Okay, we should stop with the puns now. Okay. <laughs>